Now, my dear students, uh, frankly speaking, I have lost account of the time, how many times this question, hydrated cyst, has been asked. I think that this is a topic which is of immense importance. The yield of this question as far as any examinations is concerned is too high. It may be asked in the form of a clinical scenario, it may be asked in pharmacology as has been asked in FMG 2024, it may be asked in the form of an image based question, so I will be clubbing all the things over here. A brief concise lecture about hydrated cyst and you will be done with uh, this question in the most satisfactory manner. So as far as hydrated cyst is concerned, you have to remember first thing. Even this is the level A question. Very easy. What causes hydrated cyst? So you may be given choices and you have to remember this important echinococcus granulosus. So the hydrated cyst, preferably the hydrated cyst of the liver, what I am referring to, is caused by the organism echinococcus granulosus. And this hydrated cyst is usually most common in liver. Very important. And the echinococcus granulosus is also given the name as dog tapeworm. So this is to be remembered. So dog tapeworm, because these types of questions are also asked, which is the fish tapeworm, which is a dog tapeworm, that's important. So the echinococcus granulosus is also given the name as dog tapeworm. Now you will go around studying its microbiology, the structure of the echinococcus, the scolex which comes into there, the circle of hooks, the proglottids, the life cycle, the dogs being infected, the sheep being infected and how it is transmitted to the humans from through this chain. So that you also remember as far as the life cycle of echinococcus granulosus is concerned and you have to remember that there are these eggs which are ingested by the sheep and the sheep and they hatch themselves and in the gut they migrate from the blood to the various organs in the humans they migrate from the gut to the liver and to the various other organs like the brain so we can have a clinical condition which we give the name as disseminated hydratosis that means in addition to liver all other organs may be affected but the primary focus is the liver and that's what's usually asked for PG. For neat SS there are certain high level questions which are asked. I am not discussing those things over here. So you have to remember that the primary thing is that the liver is the effect most commonly affected but many organs can be affected and the test is the indirect hemagglutination test. The Lab diagnosis of this test is by virtue of various indirect tests and indirect hemagglutination test is one of the important tests for hydrated disease. Now, as you can see, I have told you that liver is the most commonly affected and you can see this area, this is the right lobe of the liver, this is the left lobe and usually a lesion, a cyst, which is usually calcified in the right lobe of the liver would be a hydrated cyst. Now, liver can have multiple lesions like hepatic adenomas, hepatocellular carcinoma, metastasis from different other areas, a liver abscess, I mean to say a septic liver abscess. A patient with a septic liver abscess will present with pyrexia, high grade fever, and multiple other conditions. A person with a secondary in the liver might be having a primary somewhere, and you will have multiple nodularities in the liver and they will be hard, irregular on palpation. A patient with a hepatic adenoma will have a characteristic history like a female with a contraceptive use and a slight hepatomegaly and these are the things. So these are the associated conditions. But this liver, once the hip, liver is affected with hydrated cyst, this is the area, the right lobe of the liver is the most commonly area affected and this image over here is a gross macroscopic appearance of a hydrated cyst which has been enucleated as such and this is the compact cyst which has been very nicely 
taken out and this is how a hydrated cyst would look on a gross morph morphology uh, as far as its appearance is concerned. Now over here, this is an image-based CT scan showing a hydrated cyst over here. So this is a hydrated cyst in here in the liver, okay? So this is the right lobe of the liver while we have the hydrated cyst, one bigger and one smaller hydrated cyst. So this is to be remembered, asked many a times. One important thing, I told you echinococcus granulosus and once I was mentioning you, I just made a typical um, <laughs> definition that echinococcus granulosus causes hydrated cyst of the liver mainly because the echinococcus multilocularis causes hydrated disease of the lungs alveol alveolar echinococcosis so echinococcus multilocularis causes the hydrated disease of the lungs mostly and echinococcus vogali causes polycystic disease there may be multiple disseminated cysts throughout and that is the common cause would be echinococcus vogali so that's to be important to remember it. and as i mentioned you again you see the liver is the most commonly affected but any organ like the lungs the bone the muscles the kidneys even the brain might be affected in disseminated hydrotosis and usually a patient how would a patient present as i told you the differential diagnosis but this patient would be presenting with abdominal tenderness a slight bit of tender liver the right hypochondric area will be tender signifying secondary infection sometimes and sometimes it can be an incidental finding you may not have you do an ultrasound and it instantly shows ultrasound of the abdomen it incidentally shows a hydrated cyst in the liver so that's important and secondary causes once there's a long-standing hydrated cyst it can cause splenomegaly as a result of portal hypertension that's important when once the spleen is primarily affected so that's important so different manifestations depending upon uh, the organ involved but here we are talking specifically about the hydrated cyst of the liver that's important and as I mentioned to you that dog is the definitive host and man is the accidental intermediate host so the life cycle is of such a nature that dog is the definitive host and man becomes an accidental host now is this all associated with the hydrated cyst no what is the primary problem the primary problem is that you cannot leave the hydrated cyst unmonitored why because sometimes this hydrated cyst in case it enlarges rapidly it can just rupture and once the rupture of the hydrated cyst occurs it can cause a gross and massive anaphylaxis that's important so every step should be there to prevent the rupture of the hydrated cyst that's important because a generalized anaphylaxis can occur as a result of rupture within the liver it can rupture in case it is present in the lungs it can rupture leading to intrapleural uh, rupture and intraperitoneal rupture as well so rupture can occur at any site with the enlargement of the cyst and it creates an emergency so that is to be potentially avoided by meticulous management of the hydrated cyst and what is the how do we manage this hydrated cyst? Again, a question asked in FMG. There were four drugs given and an image was given as far as the hydrated cyst is concerned. And you have to remember that albendazole is the drug, most effective drug currently used. An old drug, but still in use and the, one of the best drugs used for hydrated cyst. And in addition to that, you have to remember that what do we do surgically? Surgically, this is the peer technique. A surgeon does a peer technique once he or she has to remove the hydrated cyst. And what is this peer technique sometimes asked? It is percutaneous aspiration and injection of a scolocidal agent. And then what we do, we just take out the cyst contents and repair the cyst. So that is important. So this peer technique, percutaneous aspiration involvement and the injection simultaneously, injection of the scolocidal agents, which kills the, uh, all these scolocytes and then it prevents further development of the hydrated cysts as well. So peer technique, albendazole, the right lobe of the liver, uh, the echinococcus granulosus, the life cycle sheep and the dog, the man as an existential host then the image based question and the prevention of the um, uh, i mean see complications like the rupture are the prime focus which have to be taken care of this answers most of the things which you will encounter once the hydrated cyst is asked from you so i hope that this will help you a lot in your answering of the questions in the examinations which is highly expected thanks a lot